All right, so today we are breaking down supremacy. The mech battling play to earn game that's just about to launch on the Binance Smart Chain. So if you're watching this video, might be, might be timely, might be timely. Real quick, if you don't know me, my name's Ryan, no autopilot YouTube channel. I do deep dives into tokens every Monday through Friday. How do I figure out which ones to review? I ask the community. I put out a poll every single day asking you guys what should we cover. And Supremacy won not once, but actually won twice. I inadvertently put it in there twice. My bad, Supremacy uh, folks. <laughs> also, last shout out here, I do have a Patreon. So if you want to support the channel, support kind of unbiased research, you know, it's not my goal to be your friend necessarily. I just want to give you my take that hopefully helps you uh, make a wise decision on your investment. And ultimately, you make money, I make money. That's the long-term vision. All right? Sick. Let's take this thing back here. What are we doing? So as I mentioned, this thing to me is like Titanfall. If you're an Xbox OG. It's like Titanfall on the blockchain, but better. All right? So they went ahead and they had the team right here. Uh, they had a seed round that went ahead and executed out of Perth, Australia. Uh, as I mentioned, it's built on the Binance Smart Chain. It's a BEP20 token. It's also going to have NFTs that are based on the Ethereum uh, blockchain. And there's a foundational layer between the two that kind of intermingles and communicates. I actually jumped into the Discord, asked the developers some questions, and they were super helpful and kind of steering me straight there. So initially, it's going to be a web-based game. With mobile coming soon, it's mechs, it's land, it's resources, it's alliance, it's killing other robots. Like, come on, how are you not going to love it? So we talk about the team here. We have Alex. He's the CEO. John is the CTO. And Lan is the chief sales officer. What's important to me when I'm evaluating these things, because that's what I'm doing, okay? I'm evaluating to see if I should get into the IDO or if I should invest in the token. I want to see that they have a track record. What's up, AA Ron? <laughs> I want to see if they have a track record in the gaming space, in the blockchain space. Okay, I want to see this isn't a cash grab. These are people with some uh, legitimate backbone to them. And everyone on the founding team has deep, deep uh, tech experience. Okay, and touching also crypto as well as gaming. So from a uh, foundational layer with the team itself, I feel generally pretty good. We have each of the different LinkedIn pages pulled up for them here. Now they did go ahead and they had this announcement that came out. Uh, talked about uh, Ninja Syndicate, which I'm still a little foggy on the connection. I think it's the prior company that Alex owns that had this kind of um, metaverse supremacy game spin off of. But in essence, that was kind of the connection there. And this is kind of what that website looked like. So the Ninja Software website that they ran. Now I did watch a couple AMAs from these folks and really what I'm looking for here, <clears throat> like I'm just trying to get a gut sense. Okay, I'm trying to get a gut sense. Do these people know what they're doing? Do they care about their community? Do they seem passionate? Do they seem structured and organized? Um, and really it's kind of a gray area, right? Like you can't tell if someone's trying to scam you or not. But watching this, I generally felt like it's a couple of tech guys who are trying to launch a legitimate game and are engaging with the community, answering them straightforward. So I, I didn't see anything in, in this that kind of stood out to me as, as iffy. We've got some stuff in the chat. What we got? Sarah Brolum. What's up, man? This website's gameplay in the background. Next level. Yes. Yeah, totally. The, the artwork and stuff absolutely blew me away when I jumped on this website. Lucas. Literally, whole team is doxxed. That is another bonus, okay? A lot of these things, they have founders. We don't even know who they are. Like, how am I supposed to give you a 1,000 of my hard-earned dollars if I don't even know who you are? Lucas Chapman, Ninja Syndicate is the overarching company. Supremacy is just the first game in their metaverse. Appreciate that. Appreciate you setting me straight there. All right, cool. So the next thing I look at, so the founders check, check the box. Good to go. The next thing I want to know is the community. Because these crypto projects don't take off unless there's a passionate community behind them. So that is, how are you going to get marketing out, right? Um, Discord, excuse me, Reddit. Reddit is a little light. Reddit is a little light. So if any of you holders out there or people are, are getting into supremacy, I highly suggest 
that you work with the team, support that team, and getting this uh, this uh, Reddit page pumping. Now, when we look at Twitter, again, it's kind of a, a newer protocol, so only 3,600 followers. That's not ideal going into an initial coin offering, but, you know, maybe the under the radar is actually a benefit to you and me. Who knows? Now, we look at YouTube. They have a bunch of videos with one of their videos actually getting around a quarter of a million views. It must have been a short, something like that. But And these folks are hopping on here. They're talking about the metaverse, talking about how they're building uh, the UI interface um, front and center. So I dig that. I dig that a lot. What else we got? So we talk about growth. Okay, what are some potential growth levers for this thing? Uh, well, one, launching the game. Launching the game. So the game comes out February 22nd. They're actually going through a initial coin offering, uh, I believe today, later today, if you want to get in on this thing. Now, initially, reading through the documentation, it sounds like it's going to list on PancakeSwap right off the bat. So that isn't ideal. You'd like to see another exchange on there. But that could also mean that you could go and you could scoop up some tokens on the dirt, dirt cheap. Another potential growth lever for this thing is they have a treasury buyback in place. So in essence, 20% of the transactions that happen on Supremacy, they're going to be um, uh, buying those from the treasury and funnel it back into the protocol for growth. That's cool. That's cool. Here's the information right here, listing on PancakeSwap. Here's the information I just talked about, about the 20% that's allocated uh, to go ahead and uh, consolidate to the treasury for in-game utilization. Typically with those things, they go ahead and they have like initiatives like first players that join that kind of pump it up and are actually using it. You get a much higher quantity of the token than maybe folks who enter a couple months down the road. And they're really just trying to get those initial adopters pumped up and excited, spread word and get people in. Now we talk about partners, VC backers. So this group is out of Australia. And I don't know if you guys know this, but Australia is kind of like a hot place right now for crypto gaming. All right, we have Immutable X out of there. We have a bunch of DeFi protocols too. Some that are building on Polkadot. So there's a lot of a lot of really, really sharp people in Australia building crypto projects. Um, so anyhow, so these VC investors, I hadn't heard of them before, but I'm not deep in the Australia VC game, but it does seem that they have a few backers that are uh, supporting their project. And we look at partnerships. So this is actually linked to uh, Ninja Syndicate the overarching company, not uh, Supremacy Games himself, but they went ahead and they hired Matty Greenspan as an advisor. He's a former um, economics uh, analyst for eToro. So someone on their team to kind of help make sure the economics and the tokenomics of the protocol are working working properly. Here we look at the roadmap. So again, they have that uh, BEP20 public sale that's happening, I believe, later today, or uh, at least in the next couple of days. They also are going to go ahead and have uh, NFTs of all these mechs that you can buy, you can exchange. There's components that you'll be able to strap onto them, like different guns and weapons to make them stronger and different, personalized. So that's pretty sweet. I dig that. Now, a quick pause when we look at the tokenomics. So it's going to be the SUPS token. Again, this game is built on Binance, but they do or they are going to have their NFTs on Ethereum. Uh, and there's an underlying foundational layer that kind of connects the two of them. The utility of the token is to buy mech NFTs, upgrades, purchase production buildings, pay for goods and services within the game. Now we look at the total supply. This is something that kind of stood out to me. Um, the total supply is only 300 million tokens. And typically with some of these games you looked at, it's like a billion or more. So what that means to me is if this project were to go ahead and execute on its roadmap, gets listed, uh, has some adoption, the game's fun, people are coming in. A price on this thing w- would would be really, really good, right? We're talking, we're not talking like penny token, I guess is the, the takeaway here. You're probably talking uh, $5, $15, $20, like that type of thing, depending upon overall uh, network effects and having people buy into the protocol. What else do we got? So I want to look at private sales, okay? I want to know if I get in now, how does that compare to the people who got in before me, right? On the the, the pre-sale, uh, pre-market sale. So one of their articles, they mentioned that they sold 75 million tokens for its Metaverse game, uh, amounting to $2.5 million in a private pre-sale. This is before the IDO. 
And I pulled this up in their Telegram. Uh, one thing that stood out to me as a big negative, uh, just being honest with you guys, is that there is no vesting schedule right now for those private sale buyers. And the minimum that they had in for that was 5,000. And the price that they paid was around two cents. So without a vesting schedule for those early backers, if this thing were to launch and it has some you know, pump in the price, you're gonna have a downward pressure on it for a while. Just, just being, just being frank with you. Now the founders though, their vesting schedule is different. They have six months through two years for the founding team to go ahead and have their tokens unlock. Let's check the chat, what we got? Oh, we got a bunch in here. Oh, I missed you guys, okay. Nico Ertz, what's up man? Hi all, Steve Owens, howdy. Jim Payne, can't wait to buy this token and play the games, looking amazing, for sure. Crypto Marcoco, where is it available? It's not out yet, man. It's not out yet. So if you want to get in on this, my suggestion is uh, jump on this website. Here, I'll, I'll give it to you right here. In the bottom, there's a Discord link. If you navigate to the Discord, the announcements on when the uh, actual token sale is going to be released, uh, and you can stay in the loop and, and jump into it. But there you go. Now we're looking at some news announcements. A couple different things. So they had this one come out uh, talking about Stealth. So in essence, they're taking their uh, founder funds, treasury funds, putting in a hardware wallet, try and make some of their moves stealth on the back end. Uh, the reasoning for that, from what they say, is so people can't um, pre-predict their moves and manipulate their price. Uh, so take that as you will. Again, we already talked on Maddie coming over the team to help with the economics. They talked about some of the weapon designs. So we got some of the cool art right here. I mean, again, this thing is just screaming to me like uh, Warhammer, Titanfall, like that, that type of stuff. Super cool. And then roadmap, we touched on this a little bit already, but 10,000 Genesis NFTs. They got the uh, token sale that's coming up here pretty soon. They have phase two, which is go ahead and open up their marketplace. So if you have an NFT, you could sell it to other people or buy it from other people. The releasing of a syndicate, which is their web platform that kind of allows you to watch or play or resource manage and like there's a few different ways to go ahead and uh, interact with the protocol and eventually hopefully get some VR headset set up so you can actually jump into this thing and like you know in the VR world pretty dope Lucas Champion it will be available through the supremacy website they aren't using a launch pad boom there you go okay so as I mentioned at the beginning of this thing okay it's not my job to be your friend, although I hope we can be like cordial to each other, all right? My job with this channel is to give you as much unbiased information as I can, and you make the decision for yourself, okay? Because you're an adult, or at least you act like an adult. Okay, so I'm gonna give you two scenarios, two scenarios, and you choose what you will. Let's start with the bullish scenario first, okay? An under the radar, slept on, play to earn game brings back the awesome experiences of Titanfall with all the benefits of the blockchain. Okay, early adopters to this game make a mint farming tokens while everyone else is sleeping on it. This success brings additional VC funds into the overall firm, allowing them to grow this game exponentially as well as spin off a whole bunch of other games. And that team goes on to do that, creating more high quality play to, play to earn winners. And if we look at the Binance Smart Chain right here, I got DAP Radar pulled up. We can see there's a bunch of games that are launched on the Binance Smart Chain that are doing well. Like Bomb Crypto in, in particular, I've heard a ton about. I haven't dug into it, but I've heard a ton about it. So that's kind of the bullish scenario. Okay, you're getting in early. This thing's gonna be sweet. Nobody knows about it. Even their own marketing seems to be a little lackluster. Sorry guys, I'm just calling it what it is. Now let's flip, let's go ahead, let's flip it. A bearish scenario. The initial reception is weak. Okay, the community seems like it's still building up. Some of their social media stuff doesn't really seem that built out. Also, there's price dumps, since all the people who pre-invested prior to it getting public listed have no locking mechanisms. They have the burn mechanism for the treasury, but since the game isn't growing, they're not able to fund the ongoing growth. The development, the team members, dealing with issues, all that kind of adds up. Also, the potential mechanics of the game itself are taken advantage of. If it isn't well thought out, it could be a lopsided affair where people who are gaming the system are able to get an unfair advantage on everybody else, making people quit. The roadmap gets halted and eventually it turns into a zombie protocol just drifting aimlessly on PancakeSwap. So 
there you have it. Okay, there's two different scenarios. Now, as for what I think, I personally, I personally am not planning on participating in this thing. Um, and I really don't have a good reason why. Okay, I did all this research on it. To me, it, it seems completely legitimate and fine. I guess the, the one thing that stood out to me was the launching on the Binance Smart Chain. Um, I don't really hear about a lot of projects doing that that are legitimate. Not saying this is a scam, but I just don't hear a bunch of projects doing that that are legitimate. In addition to that, the community seems kind of at a weaker point right now. Um, the individuals themselves, the, the founding team, they seem to have a deep, deep history in technology and games. And so I think I could be proven wrong. This could be one where I release this video. I'm like, ah, I'm not buying it. And then like for months on, people are hitting me in the comments like, dude, you're a numbskull. You missed it. You, you called it wrong. But it's not entering my game five portfolio. So yeah, there you have it. There's my review. Supremacy game token. Let me know in the comment section down below what you're going to do. Okay. Do you like this? Did I miss something? Is it an opportunity to go ahead and 100x? Let me know. Also, let me know what uh, game we're going to be reviewing next. I need to uh, make sure I knock that out for you guys without uh, getting them mixed up again. So sorry about that, supremacy folks. All right, let's check the comments. What we got? Lucas Chapman, there is no burn mechanism. It's a stable 300 million. Lucas Chapman, the price shouldn't sink below 12 cents USD due to the consolidation treasury. Yeah, I'm sorry. So that, that's what I was referring to. So, so if we jump in, what do they say here? Hold on, let me pull it up. So many, so many tabs. We have allocated 20% of Supremacy's direct pre-sale income to be used to consolidate SUPS for the treasury for in-game utilization. So 20% of their pre-sale income, they're gonna go out and buy SUPS. So I read that as a burn but it sounds like they're gonna buy the token to have that in the treasury for future in-game utilization. So I had that wrong. I'll make sure I edit that in. I'll call that out. Thanks, Lucas. I don't know, what do you guys think? Am I being short-sighted? I mean, if, if you're, <clears throat> if you got into the, pre, uh, the pre-sale, your opinion's probably biased, okay? Just calling it what it is. But am I, Am I not taking this thing serious enough? And with the price sink, I don't know, man. I don't know. So if 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 they if they bought in at what was it, twelve cents? Oh, it wasn't twelve cents. Two cents. So a five thousand minimum buy at two cents with no vesting, and they raised. What did we say that they raised? They raised. Sorry, hold on. We'll find it. Hold on. They raised two and a half million dollars in that. I mean, that's a lot of selling pressure. I mean, I could be wrong. But if it were me, if I had done this, okay, I got in at two cents. This thing lists at, say, 12 cents. I mean, right there, it's a 5X on my five grand. So right off the gate, I made $25,000. Um, it'd be pretty hard for me not to not to sell or at least take profits.